Capture One has just changed the game when it comes to tethering. Now, if you watch my content, you already know I love to shoot tethered, especially when I'm in a studio environment. Being able to, for myself to be able to see what the photos are looking like on a big screen is super crucial. If you're working with clients, it's very important for them to be able to see the photos on a screen so that they're not hovering over your shoulders. For the longest time, in order to do that, you would need to have a tether cable. The one that I use here is made by Tether Tools. It's like a $60 USB cable, uh, and I own several of them because they sometimes get torn, they get uh, messed up. So don't ever wanna be without a tether cable if you're used to shooting tethered. But with this latest update with Capture One, now you could actually tether your camera wirelessly. So let's talk about that. So being able to tether your cameras wirelessly, this is only gonna work with certain camera models. Uh, I'm actually gonna put the models that are available to be used with this wireless tethering feature here on the screen. There's some different models made by Sony. There's a few models made by Canon. And I'm sure as new cameras come out, you know, you'll, they'll have the ability to be able to do this uh, Wi-Fi tethering with Capture One. So let's talk about how to set up this wireless tethering using Capture One. And I've actually got the Sony Alpha 7 IV with me. So first things first, I'm going to press on the menu here and I'm in the network uh, tab. I am going to transfer slash remote. We're gonna go to our PC remote function and where it says PC remote, it's probably turned off, that's fine. You wanna go down to PC remote connection method and where it was USB just a few moments ago because we were tethering with USB, you're gonna to wanna to go to Wi-Fi direct. And by doing that, you're setting up a direct Wi-Fi connection between your camera and your computer. You could also go through an access point, but I found that that does take a little bit longer for the photos to transfer from your camera to the computer. So we're gonna select Wi-Fi direct. And then now that it's set to Wi-Fi Direct, we're gonna to go to PC Remote. We'll turn that on. And we get this message here that says, you can check information required for connection to the PC and Wi-Fi Direct Info. Real easy, we'll just hit OK. We'll go down to Wi-Fi Direct Info. And now on this screen, you're gonna see what your SSID or your network name is, uh, including the password and of course the device name. So. From here, we're pretty much done with everything on the camera. Now we move over to the computer and we're gonna to connect to the Wi-Fi network that's been uh, set up with the Alpha 7 IV. So now within Capture One, we're gonna to go to the Tether tab and you're gonna notice here where it says camera that it says no camera is available and that's fine, that's normal. We're gonna go up and this is on a Mac by the way. So we're gonna go up to our Wi-Fi settings here, select other networks. And we see on the back of the camera that the SSID is, uh, it's gonna vary based on your camera, but I can see it says seven uh, M4. So I'm just looking through the available options here to try to find that network that's been created by the camera. Okay, so now it's popping up here in my preferred networks. So I will select that network and we are connected. So now that we're connected through Wi-Fi direct from our computer and camera, uh, we'll go back into Capture One, and it should take a few moments here, but where it says no camera available, eventually it will show our Sony ILCE 7 Mark IV. So now we are completely tethered wirelessly with this setup. Uh, within Capture One, I have the ability, just like I would if I was connected through USB, to change my settings. I can start and stop uh, recording, take photos, do all of that stuff within Capture One. So let's talk about some of the intricacies of using this wireless tether, especially in comparison to using a USB cable. So if you're using a USB cable to tether with Capture One, it's pretty much instantaneous, usually about a second at most for the photo to transfer from your camera to um, Capture One, and that's with your RAW files. Now, being that you're connecting wirelessly through Wi-Fi Direct, it isn't going to be as fast as a wired connection. However, you have a lot of advantages. So the biggest one being that I could take this computer and put it in a completely different room. And because it's connected through Wi-Fi, they say, for example, if I have clients here, they could be in the lobby. I could be here shooting and those raw files will transfer via Wi-Fi. And they usually take anywhere from about five seconds to about maybe 15 seconds, depending on your camera, uh, to transfer those, wi uh, those files through Wi-Fi uh, from your camera to your computer. Now, you do have a really cool option with the Alpha 7 IV um, where you could actually go into the settings on the camera 
in the menus, you could actually go to a setting called PC Save Image Size. And if you go there, you'll see that you could save original or 2M. So you could save smaller files on your computer, but still have the raw files on your camera. Now, if you do that, it's really fast. I mean, literally I'm taking a photo and that smaller file is literally popping up on Capture One almost before I could even turn around to see if the picture is on there or not. Um, so you do have that option. You still have the raw files on your camera, but your computer is just gonna be getting these smaller JPEG files, which are able to be previewed by your clients. So like I said, this is a game changer when it comes to being able to shoot tethered in a studio. And if you wanna test this out for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description of this video uh, where you could actually download Capture One and try this out for free with whatever cameras it is you own. If the wireless tethering feature doesn't work, say if you have an older camera body, um, you're perfectly fine doing a USB cable. I've been doing it that way for years, but it is really nice to see that in 2022, with these newer camera bodies that we have the option of going completely wireless. It's just so nice to not have to trip over cables in the studio and uh, worry about all that stuff. So download a free trial. I'll link it in the description while you're there. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe if you all enjoy this type of content. And while you're here, check out this video that you see here on the screen. I think it's one that you will find interesting, especially if you're into studio photography. I will see you there.